Our lesson today is titled Faith of an Anointer, and it's found in the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 7, verses 36 through 50. This is Sunday School Lesson for April the 21st, 2024. My name is Tony Miller, and the key verse for our lesson today is found in the 50th verse of the text, and it reads as follows. And Jesus said to the woman, your faith in me has saved you. Go in peace, free from the distress experienced by, because of sin against faith of an anointer is our subject. So the aim of this lesson is to identify what saved the woman and compare and contrast the mindset of Jesus, the Pharisee and the woman and evaluate uh, his or her own mindset in light of those three Again, it's my YouTube channel. Ask you please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you get my lessons automatically. Please like my lessons, please share my lessons, and leave me comments. All of these things continue to encourage me to share this word of God with you. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful that you have brought your people together to share a word from you, Lord, that understand more about this the faith of this anointing woman and this or this the saving faith that this woman would have lord and we're grateful right now we ask forgiveness of our sins wash us make us worthy vessels to be used by you surrender our, by you we surrender our will to you at this moment lord use us all as your humble servant teach us a great word this word by the power of your holy spirit in jesus name we pray amen so this lesson is is a lesson that I, I'm repurposing, and I've done this a few times uh, this year again, that I, I share with you that, that I don't do like other folks that just read a commentary and claim that's my lesson. I, I, I did do the 10 to 15 hours of preparation uh, with reading commentaries and pre studying, praying, and meditating, and, and listening to videos and, and sermons and all, and, 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 and that's what I did for you. So. Uh, this lesson has a, a name of the, 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 the this faith of this anointer, but it also that name then was called uh, Faith Saves. But this lesson is the same, and, and I, I, my prayer that you will get the essence of this lesson, and, and I will close off this lesson and tie these two concepts of this faith of this anointer and this saving faith as well. It's my goal. And, God willing, we will get a great word from God today and understand more about our faith. Amen. So the setting of this lesson that is in the AD 28 is uh, the first year of Jesus' ministry, that his place was in Galilee. I shared with you before, his first miracle was water into wine. He called the 12 disciples. Uh, again, it's part of the death of uh, this setting I gave you last week. We're still in chapter seven of this um, this um, gospel, uh, um, um, the gospel of um, Luke. And he heals this man with the withered hand. He gives very instructions about loving your enemies and all that. Be kind and grateful and merciful. And the parable of the blind leading the blind. And then last week's lesson was that, uh, was that Christ was, uh, he healed that centurion, uh, who was commended for his faith because he 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 says that Jesus you don't have to go you can just speak the word and we know that your power your virtue has has this this uh, amazing quality that you don't have to even be there in order to 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 have your faith be activated and that his faith was so powerful that Jesus said that there's none that he's seen in all of this region of Jerusalem than than this one because he believed that that as well as well placed that Jesus power did not have to be at that specific place in order to happen, that he could speak and it occurred. And, it's, and it goes on about this raising this little son and name and share with you that many people were raised to death from death in this uh, thing and the multitudes were instructed as we know about that Beatitudes and, there, and many people were healed along this journey. This is the setting of this lesson in chapter seven of our text today. Next slide. 
So again, chapter 7 of Luke, the Pharisees were not happy about what Jesus was doing in this ministry. And I share with you in verse 21 through 23, that in the very hour when he was healing these people of the sickness of these destructive body plagues and evil spirits, and many of them were, were blind, and he gave them this free and gracious and joy-giving gift of sight. And in verse 22, he replied to them, he, and he told them to go tell John, it was John the Baptist, that what they had seen and heard that the blind had received their sight, the lame had walked, the lepers were cleansed, the deaf could hear, the dead were raised up, the poor have, have now have new hope for this gospel that was preached to them. And verse 23, and they were blessed and happy and joy and satisfaction in God's favor of this salvation apart from, this out, from the outward conditions that they were dealing with. And he is the one who takes no offense. And Jesus says here that he is the one who takes no offense of me. Speaking of these Pharisees, and he says that the, these guys, even though they saw everything that was going on, but they take a little bit of offense that, that wait a minute, I don't know if all of what he's doing because he's taking some uh, of the, the scope off of us. And, and, and Jesus says that, uh, that, that the one who's not heard or resentful, and again, he, he, he's, he's speaking, but these Pharisees are not really happy with what's going on with this ministry of this one Jesus. Nazareth. Next one. And chapter seven goes on. These Pharisees still not happy. And then, and in, in verse thirty one and thirty two, that 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 he he says this uh, this little parable. He said that he says that. So what uh, shall I compare these men, these Pharisees, to? The what are they like? These they're like these children sitting in the marketplace, and they see all these things that are going on, this wedding and dance and everything else, and they see all these miraculous and amazing things that are going on that Jesus has been doing, but they're not participating. They don't want to dance. They don't want to weep. They don't want to be a part of because they're wondering, well, how can he do all this stuff? We were the ones, we were like uh, cheers. Everybody knew our name. Everybody see us. We have these, these, these special robes and everything on. So we're not happy because Jesus was supplanting them as the, the moral authority in this region, in this world. Amen. That's our background, about 11 minutes of background, so let's move on to our lesson today. Next one. So, again, a setting again that Jesus just finished doing all of this. The blind receive their sight, the lame can now walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf could now hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news of this gospel, this hope and love and, and salvation and grace. And Jesus just preached to them, and then one Pharisee, one of those Jewish leaders, he needed to meet this Jesus, so he invited him to dinner at his house. That's where we are in our lesson today. So Sunday school lesson is uh, entitled Faith That Heals. It's found in Luke chapter 7, verses 37 through 48. And this week we're going to use the Amplified. And I know we started in verse 37, but I'm going to share with you verse 36 that began one of those Pharisees, he asked Jesus to die with him again. That's that one I just shared with you. And that he, uh, Jesus, went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at that table, the table I shared with you earlier, that those tables that have these uh, these pillows and, and such, not like our traditional tables today. Next slide. But but the question I, I, I share with you and why I interject this, this cell in here, what was his motivation? Amen. Next slide. So Sunday school lesson is faith that heals. And we began here in verse 37. And, and behold, again, that Jesus is now, that he, he's, he's come off the, the, this road where he's been doing all these miraculous healings and all. And this Pharisee invites him to his house. And he, and he now he comes to this house and, he, and he's ready to sit in uh, for this dinner. And, and behold, uh, at this, this, uh, this, this Simon's house that this woman... Uh, of the town was especially a wicked sinner and, and and she had learned that that jesus was going to be reclining in this pharisee's house and she brought her alabaster little flask she has that had this that was filled with this 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 uh this ointment this 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 expensive perfumed ointment that she has now and and again this is the, the interjecting here too that that she no doubt must have known who jesus was Let's share with you a bit of a commentary that may help give us some clarity. Verse 37. Next slide. 
with his uh, pulpit commentary for verse 37. And behold, this woman in the city, which was a sinner. And, and, and she knew that Jesus sat at the dinner in this Pharisee's house. And, and no doubt she may have been in this house before. Again, she was a woman of a bad reputation and, and she did much sin. And, and her miserable way of life would thus be well known to this one Simon. And the other guests as well, that these other Pharisees who may have been there as well or, or other people in his family. And this sad detail was served to bring out the contrast in a more vivid colors. And in, in these feasts, these houses were often left open. And uninvited strangers frequently, frequently passed through this open courtyard into this guest chamber. And they looked on as people would eat and they would be fellowship in. And she heard that Jesus was already there and perhaps often had heard of this, this pleading word. She may have heard him, his speaking, and again, he had done all this that I share with you in verse seven, I, 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 chapter seven, I share with you all the things that were occurring before this period of time. And, and, and again, it, these feasts were open. She had heard about this thing, and, and, then, and then she had heard about his pleading words, and, and she was begging, and when Jesus was begging these sinners to come to him for peace. And perhaps what made her take this step of boldly seeking out these master's words. Apparently, he has spoken about coming to me all you that labor and are heavy, Larry Layton, and I will give you this rest. We find in Matthew 11, 28 through 30. And it was a bold step for one like her. This sinner, this prostitute, it was a bold step for her to do this, to press uninvited in broad daylight into the house of a rigid purist, this, this Pharisee, and with, uh, but the knowledge that Jesus, so personally she thought that he was unknown, that she was, he was unknown to her, that, that, but he was, she was there. And because of what she knew that he would give, that she, she got courage and he gave her courage and, and she thought no one would dare to trust and thrust her out of the presence of this strange loving master. And so she earnestly had, 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 had moved forward and, and this sin weary person would become uh, one who would um, would get these sins re relieved from her body, from her life. Next one. The Sunday school lesson is faith that saves in verse 38. And standing behind him, this prostitute in this, uh, in this uh, dinner setting was standing behind him, Jesus, and, her, and, and at, at his feet, and weeping and she began to weep and she began to weep at his feet with her tears and she wiped them with her hair and her and her and and her head and, and she kissed his feet affectionately and anointed them with this uh, oil that she had contained in that little alabaster container that she may have worn, worn around her neck this expensive perfume this this, this prostitute that she 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 must have knew that again that she was probably no doubt a, a Jewish person you would think because again even more boldly would be this Gentile going into the house of this uh, these uh, this this Pharisee but she more than likely could have been a, 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 a Jewish prostitute and, but she knew that 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 Jesus was this Messiah the Son of the Living God because of all that she had seen and she knew that she would find the salvation she would find this forgiveness of sins from him and him alone. Next slide. She must have seen the miraculous healings that were going on that I share with you all throughout this chapter seven. And the good news, this gospel was preached to them that she must have known more about this Jesus before coming to this dinner. Next slide. Sunday school lesson is faith that saves in verse 39. <clears throat> and now when the Pharisee who had invited him, Jesus, saw it, he said to himself, again, he's speaking underneath his himself. He said it to himself. He didn't speak it out loud. And, and this man, Jesus, if, if this man, Jesus, were a prophet, he would surely know who and what sort of woman this who is touching him. For she is a notorious sinner, a social outcast, and devoted to her sin that, uh, that, that, that this man is speaking, this Pharisee, this, this Pharisee is speaking to himself. And he says that uh, Jesus should know who this chick is. I don't. But if 
again, it, it says that if this man were a, were a real prophet, if Jesus was a real prophet, this man, he said to himself, and, and if you go back to this text that, that I share with you from 36 all the way to now, that there is no words that are being spoken. There was not a word spoken from the time that Jesus had entered into this, 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 this dinner setting, and, and this woman now comes to, and she's now doing all of these things, and, and no words were, were spoken, but Jesus knew who she was. After all, he is omniscient, is he not? Amen. Sunday school lesson is faith saves, and it's verses 40 through 42. And then now Jesus is speaking. The first words are ma mentioned in this dinner setting, and Jesus replying to him, saying, Again, again, he, Jesus, the, Simon did not speak a word. This is this Pharisee did not speak a word, but he says, Simon, I have something to say to you. And Simon answered, Teacher, Rabbi, say it. Verse 41, and a certain lender of money at interest had two debtors. debtors. One owed him 500 denarii and the other one 50. And when they had no means of paying, the creditor, the person who was lending the money, uh, freely forgave them both. Which of them will, will love him, that creditor, more? Which person. And again, this is a, a parable that Jesus is lending into this conversation. And again, he gives this Simon a, an occasion to respond to this parable that Jesus gives to him. Next slide. So this the denarii is a day's wages. And I share with you, uh, give you some example that if someone is, uh, has gotten uh, forgiveness for five thousand dollars versus one that gives for God forgiveness for fifty thousand dollars which one is greater next one so my answer is the one with the biggest or largest forgiveness of the debt I believe will love him more at least that's my answer to this question next one uh, this verse 43 this faith saves and, 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 and Simon answered, the one I take it for whom he forgave and canceled the more. And Jesus said to him, ha, ah, you're a winner. Ding, 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 ding. You have decided correctly that he told him that that's how human nature is. That the one that got this greatest forgiveness is the one who no doubt would be the one who would have more of this forgiveness. A more of this gratitude. Next slide. The Sunday school lesson this faith says is verses 44 through 46. And then Jesus now turning towards this woman, he says to this Simon, this Pharisee, do you see this woman? Again, this prostitute who is crying and, 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 uh, and, and doing all of these things. But when I came into your house, Simon, and I share with you, there was no conversation before that at, at verse. And when I came into your house, you gave me no water for my feet. Again, Jesus coming off the road, and uh, and 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 uh, and again, there there was like no, there was not like there was showers. There was not like there. It was not like in our present day. It was a different kind of a situation. But she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. In verse 45, and you gave me no kiss. You did not give me this greeting. But she, at the moment I came in, has not ceased intermittently to kiss my feet tenderly and, and, and caressingly. In verse 46, and, and you did not anoint my head with this, with your cheap and ordinary oil, but she has anointed my feet with this costly and, and, and even more expensive perfume that she has in her in her is her treasured possession hung around her neck in this alabaster box or flask so jesus says to this one simon next one so jesus says that you not give me this holy kiss you did not anoint my hair with oil you did not wash my feet Again, I share with you, hospitality is defined as this quality of disposition, receiving and treating guests 
and strangers in a warm and friendly and generous way. And, and, and Jesus is telling this one Simon, this Pharisee, who, who again is wanting to interact with Jesus. And, and, he, and he had, again, I, I share what was his motivation, that he didn't even give Jesus this, this small, infantile uh, manner of hospitality. But this prostitute is doing that same thing. Next slide. The Sunday school lesson faith saves in verse 47. And, and therefore I tell you, again, he's speaking to this one, Simon, this Pharisee, I tell you her sins. Many as they are, that she could have slept with hundreds or even a thousands of men, but they are forgiven her. Because she has love so much. She's given that much of herself. She's given that much of her heart to me. That, But he who is forgiven loves little and again like he's sharing with that that parable that he shared that the one that gave that forgives much is more has this more gratitude because she has more to be forgiven for than than you who may have been forgiven for just a little because you think you're so pious but this woman who who's who's had sins and and, and committed thousands or possibly thousands of sins and but she, the one who is forgiven little forgives little and then she said and he said to her, your sins are forgiven. And she no doubt has great gratitude for Jesus is giving unto her. Again, Jesus speaking to this Pharisee, Simon, in his house at this dinner. Next slide. I finish, we finish our text and I'm going to move to closing this lesson that he says that, 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 that I love you more than anything. That's what this woman is basically saying, that she's because she has loved that much that Jesus is giving her this forgiveness for sin because she stepped out and beyond her circumstances, out beyond what she feels in her comfort. And she moved to find this Jesus and I loved him that much more than anything else. The Pharisees were all caught up with their reputation, but she, this this woman who's in the shadow, she wants to find this Jesus, and she loves him that much in order to expose herself to these circumstances. Next slide. But this is the Pharisees encounter with Jesus. He did not honor Jesus. Again, that he he was just curious. He wanted to know who's this man who, again, that uh, I shared with you, the text said that he didn't even participate. The Pharisee didn't even participate in the, the miraculous things that are going, the, the deaf, the hear, the, the blind, and all these things that are going on. And they see all the miraculous that Jesus is doing, the feeding, the, and all these things. But he was just curious. He There, there was no honor to this one who, who could be the Messiah, the one who was to come, the one who was suppose who was spoken to come even though he saw these miraculous things there, there was no hospitality that he had he he did not give a holy kiss he did not wash his feet coming off the road he did not give him re, allow him to refresh him and, and himself he did not anoint his head with oil there was no submission to jesus there he just was curious and he and it, there was no there again being the the very son of god there was no authority there was no submission to, to jesus authority because they believed that they had the authority that they were the moral authority they felt and he felt that 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 pride that that this position in life was the most important position that he owned and he was just trying to find out what's jesus doing here and what is he doing challenging our authority he was a threat to that life that they had and he needed to check out this jesus whose miracles were troubling to to him as well as those other uh pharisees as well that that, that 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 jesus was doing some things that he was he was that was unconventional that that jesus was spending time together with these unclean people too as well that that was troubling to these pharisees to this pharisee and thus that is this reason for this encounter that was probably no doubt his motivation again that is his point of view from the pharisees next slide that these unclean things i share with you that and i i went to church today and the preacher was preaching today and he said that that he was he was talking about oh, those people those sick people those those cursed people that often the people that 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 were that had uh 
had uh, deformities, that they believed that there was some curse or some sin that they'd done, and that's why there were the, these sinners. But Jesus was interacting with those 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 sinners, those Gentile people too, those those people that the that the Jews were not supposed to interact with, those tax collectors who they believed they were they were criminals, they were they were people who were fleecing the people, those unwanted folks. Jesus went, even went to a cemetery. He went to graveyards. He he changed that whole point of view of the, those 613 laws that they had that you can't do this. Those those laws that those Pharisees added beyond the ten. That he, he went to these leper leper colonies where he healed those lepers. He went to Gentile cities. He he spoke to demons. Jesus spoke to these demons. He interacted with unclean animals. Are those pigs when he 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 when he when he cast a man who was, was cutting themselves in the in the uh in the in the graveyard and 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 he casted out the demons and he and he sent them into the pigs and and Jesus changed the rules that 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 the the Pharisees went by all those man-made laws that they had and Jesus gave the unlovely folks access to Almighty God that is. Jesus is changing these things, and the, the Pharisees want to, they're wondering what's going on with this guy, and who is he, and how, how is he forgiving these sins of folks, and how is he giving hope to those who have no hope? Because before Jesus, if you were blind, you were blind, you died, went to your 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 grave died, died uh, blind. If, 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 if you were demon-possessed, you went to your de de grave demon-possessed. If, if, and all these things that you had, and all these deformities, and all these um, abnormalities that you had in your life, that they were those that would take you to your grave. But Jesus is now healing those, raising folks from the dead as well. Again, he's changed these unclean things, dead bodies he's touching. Again, changing the, the, the whole concept of unclean. Next slide. And the sinful woman's encounter with Jesus, she had a precious encounter before this dinner. And she previously encountered, no doubt, that she probably saw some of the things were occurring throughout what we'll share with you in chapter 7. And she made her conscious effort to see this Jesus. That she knew where he was and 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 uh and, and she made a conscious effort to 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 to, to see him and she went there. And she, and she came there with an intent. She came there bringing her alabaster uh, uh, container flask filled with this oil in broad daylight. And she came there with this submissive heart, this submissive spirit. And she stepped out of her comfort zone. She stepped out of what society's expectation for her, a woman of the nights, this, this woman of this, that, would, that would creep into men's uh, men's beds at night and, and to come at, at night. But she stepped out of society's expectations she, and she humbly moved forth to meet this one Jesus. That she came out of this obedience uh, that God's tugging on her heart that she needed to change and, and find hope and find this better life. That is this sinful woman's encounter with this one Jesus. Next one. Again, we're talking about this faith that saves, that faith that this woman had that, that ultimately she becomes saved. And, and, and we have these encounters with Jesus. We've seen this miraculous in our lives, right? We've seen it. Sometimes we'll call it, say, oh, the coincidence. Maybe, but we, we have seen this joy. We've seen the joy of those people who call themselves Christian. They have this crazy kind of love. And these folks, they, when we encounter them, that we they can only come from some almighty God. That how can they have some some uh, this unspeakable joy when they're encountering all kinds of diverse problems in their life and sins and, and difficulty? But they, we've seen that, right? We've seen this amazing thing, these amazing things that have happened. We know about this story. Whether we went to Sunday school back in the day or, or catechism or however we interacted, we saw on TV or whatever, we know about this gospel message of this Jesus, that he claims that he's somebody special. And we know that this Jesus is this God who claimed that he was the very word of God, the very son of God that became flesh and dwell among us when we beheld the glory of the only begotten of the Father. We know that, that the Bible talks about the, throughout all those pages of everybody about some man, this Messiah, this one who's going to come, that he's going to be a redeemer of all mankind. And it, and it was all prophesied, prophesied in this book that, that we call this Bible. And, and we know that, that what is required of us and that is that the, we 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 have this encounter with this Almighty this with Almighty God, and, and that is only way we can get it is through our faith in this one Jesus. That's what we know. Even if we're within the church and we've heard about this Jesus, that's who we are as as, as human beings that we encounter 
this Jesus. Everybody knows something about this Jesus. And, and what is required is that our faith in this Jesus. Amen? A famous text that we know in the Bible that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to whosoever believe in him shall not perish but, but have everlasting life. And then in verse 17 is even more empowering, but but uh, but have uh, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn this world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. That, that that's how we find this faith that saves us through this one, Jesus, this Messiah, this one that God sent. Next slide. That, that we know that this faith that we have to save is by this grace by, of God alone, that we cannot earn it. Is a free gift of God. It's, it's through this faith alone. It's in, and in Christ alone. And not by any efforts that we can do. We cannot add to it or take it away from it. That God gives it as a free gift to us. By our faith alone. That's what we know about this faith that saves. And we have our own encounters with this Jesus. It's just like this prostitute. We've all had previous encounters with Jesus, where, however it was with our friends and family or church and whatever, and we, we know that we must make a, a, a conscious effort uh, to, to interact with this Jesus. And, and, we, and, we, and we, we know where he is, and we can go to a church, and we, and we see that we go into church, and we, we know where he is. And if we want to encounter this Jesus, we must get there. We must interact with our friends who know them, or we must interact with church or find a place to get there. And we need to come there with an intent. Just like this, this, this woman was, this, this, this prostitute, she went there with an intent to see Jesus. That, that, and she went there in broad daylight. She didn't care what the folks saw, that, that maybe the people would, 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 uh, would, would not, not think that it was something cool to do. But she came in broad daylight, and we need to come there with a submission, just like she did. We need to step out of our comfort zones that we inter interact with this Jesus. We find out who he is and, and, and we must step out of what society or what our family's expectations are about our interaction with this Jesus. And we must come humbly to meet this Jesus and find that he will ultimately be our Savior. It is him that we, that though our faith in him that gives us, that makes us saved and puts us in the back relationship with Almighty God. That relationship was fractured in the beginning of the time with Adam. And we must come out of obedience that God is tugging on our heart, that we feel this. We know there's a hole in our heart and it's only being filled by God. And we find it in our faith in this Redeemer. God sent on our behalf, provides us connection back with him, Almighty God. Amen. And therefore God has exalted him, this Jesus, and gave him a name that's above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee will bow. Hopefully every knee will open and bow one way or another. And every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. Amen. So these are the final two verses of our printed text. And and, 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 and it reads as follows. Uh, again, this is faith of the anointed is what I share with you with the subject of the original name was faith. It was a saving and faith that just give you some perspective. And, and I, then these two, uh, faiths uh, are these two subjects intertwine and, and they merge together as we close out these last two verses of, of text and, and those who are reclining at the table with him, Jesus, began saying among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And Jesus said to the woman, your faith in me has saved you. Go in peace, free you. From the distress experienced because of sin again the key verse that began as our lesson and and, the, and this woman has this 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 amazing saving faith and I, I think that my hope is that that you will get the or have the, the the kind of faith that she has or get that kind of faith because that faith is stepped out of the shadows right that yeah, you can stay anonymous, but you step out on faith and, and follow Jesus. That, that faith that, 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 that listened, that, that studied, that watched Jesus, to, to make sure that, wow, I see everything that he done. I believe that he is who he says that he is, that, that kind of faith that, 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 that would make you move from, uh, from, un, uh, from unfamiliar, from familiar uh, condition to unfamiliar 
to, to step out on faith like you did when you stepped out and walked down the aisle and 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 walked and put your hand in the hand of of the the preacher and that this kind of faith that she had that she had a submissive kind of faith that gave her this saving faith that she submitted her herself to him and 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 submitted even to the point of anointing him and and embracing him embracing this Jesus that's the kind of faith that I'm hoping to you have this saving this faith this anointing this faith of this anointer the faith that that that, that God sees that God sees and and has uh, some measure and confidence that you are worthy of salvation the kind of faith that you surrender to God you study his word because you have this kind of faith of this anointer the saving faith is your faith today like this anointer one who would submit to herself that would get out of her comfort zone and follow Jesus do you have saving faith faith that will take you from this life to eternity the the, the Dr. Luke was gave us a a, a amazing lesson the glimpse into the life of this woman and, and her interaction with Jesus and the and these uh, religious leaders as well and 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 again I, I just hope that something you found this week uh, strengthen your faith as the Lord provides all your needs you learn something worthy of sharing my prayer that you will have this anointer kind of faith this saving kind of faith so we'll meet us we'll all meet there in eternity with Jesus and that's our Sunday school lesson this week my prayer there's something you've you've learned this week strength your faith love provides all your needs you learn something worthy of sharing that's my prayer always in Jesus name I pray thank you so much for your time